Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us this morning for today's webinar on the RTA Web Services. My name is Lynn Smith, and today our guest speaker is Hobie Bennett. Hobie is from the Customer Experience team, but is currently working as a project officer in our web services area. So welcome today, Hobie. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for having me. In today's seminar, we will be looking at the RTA's web service and particularly the update on the bond lodgements. We're going to be showing you a brief video on how this particular service is going to work. And this will be replacing the existing PDF upload facility. So the one that you use through the e-services. We're also going to be looking at the upcoming changes to other RTA services. And that's going to be including the um, printing of, um, ceasing to do the bulk printing um, at the end of this year. We'll also be looking at email notifications, ensuring your security and privacy when receiving email notifications from the RTA. Look at median rents and how to get that information. And also, if you do have questions, um, feel free to submit them through. And at the end of today's session, we will look at doing the, some of those questions for you. So just before we start, I am going to launch a poll just to gather who is in our, um, see who's in our audience today. So in this question, we're looking at which group in the rental sector do you belong to? So we're looking at whether you're a tenant, a resident, a property manager, an agent, a landlord, community support organisation or other. So I'll just leave that for a few more moments for everyone to complete that for me. Great, thanks everybody. So what we look like, we have um, quite a few people that are actually more property managers and real estate agents and a small percentage there of landlords as well. I'll just close that pulse. Okay. So customers have actually told us that when dealing with the RTA with any tenancy transactions, we need to have faster and more convenient ways. The RTA currently offers property managers and property owners and tenants three ways to lodge a rental bond. So our new RTA bond lodgement web service, so that's lodging the rental bond online. Um, we also have by way of e-services where you can scan a PDF version of the lodgement form and upload that through our system and pay by BPAY. Or we also have posting the paper forms in with a cheque or a money order to the RTA. And keeping in mind that some of the questions is that, you know, can a tenant actually lodge a bond? Tenants have always been able to lodge their bond. So um, while the main um, bonds coming through are from property managers and owners, it can come through the other way as well from tenants. But as of 1 October 2019, the RTA's bond lodgement web service will replace the option of that e-services PDF scanned form. So again, as of 1 October next week, the lodgement service will actually be through our web service and not through the e-services PDF scanning of the online, of the upload facility for the on lodgement form. So Hobie is going to be demonstrating the web services to you shortly by way of a quick video. So um, we will then be able to explain a little bit more then. The benefits of the web service is that it's easy, fast and convenient. It is a secure way to pay the bond to the RTA. It will also minimise the risks, um, delays and administrative work for property managers and owners and tenants to lodge a bond. And also to it reduces the paper forms missing that information or are not legible. So a lot of times that the RTA does get um, our forms through, we are unfortunately seeing that it's either missing signatures or information. And on occasions, the checks don't actually add up to the bonds that's been lodged. So that's going to cause delays in processing for the RTA. And on sometimes the RTA has to return those lodgements back to the people. And again, that's more paperwork. So the web service will minimise a lot of these administrative errors. The benefits of the web services for tenants, that they will be able to lodge the bond directly to the RTA and get an instant receipt when they pay by credit card or debit card. And for property managers and agents, if your tenants lodge the bond, this will save you administrative work and you will be notified by the RTA once that bond has been processed. 
So most agents will be asking tenants to pay the bond money well before they move in and hand over those keys. So we're just going to go and play a very short video. This video will show you the steps required to create a QGov identification process and also to complete the um, lodgement form online and also the options of the payment. We're going to be stepping through the whole process. It is a very short video. Um, some of it is a little bit faster than other areas, so just keep that in mind. But again, remember a copy of this webinar will be available on the RTA's website. So if you do need to view this process again, along with, we also have fact sheets and other information available as well. So Hobie, I'm just going to play that and over to you to um, explain the video. Cool, thanks Lynn. Um, so first we're going to go to the RTA website and we're going to navigate to the lodgement form. So if you click on that, you'll take, it could take you to the terms and conditions You'll scroll down, you'll be able to click that you agree, indicate the properties in Queensland and it's a rental property and proceed. So here is the QGov website. You click on the registration page. Here's where you can put your details. Um, it's very important for this process that you have your ID that you need. You need 100 points of ID. On the further page, it will be able to explain what those ID will be. Um, but you'll need an email address that you'll be able to use to register as well. Um, you add these details in, you'll have another terms and conditions that you can read and agree to there. And this part here, it'll send a confirmation code to your email address. Just double checking your junk folder as well. Make sure the confirmation code is there. And then you'll click continue. So this is the details page, as I was pointing out before, the 100 points of ID. So that's the list down there. You'll be able to see on this page, explaining what types of ID you can possibly use. Um, in this example, we're going to use a driver's license and a Medicare card. So here you'll put in the details. This obviously is a very important feature of the QGov website. It makes sure that it's very secure and helps us function with the online process a lot more securely. Um, so just completing these details here on the QGov website and read that there. And declare that this is your information you're providing. Confirm some more details here. And then this indicates you're wanting to share details with the RTA. And this is our bond lodgement form. So this is the information that you're indicating to do with the bond lodgement itself. So you'll indicate what your relationship is to the property itself. This is confirming your QGov information at the top is for your QGov account. You'll put in a phone number for yourself and RTA ID if you have, if obviously if you're an agency, you'll know what your client ID is a lot better than maybe a tenant would. Um, this is the information about the company. Up here we have validation in this field that helps to identify the account that's actually going there. So it helps us match it to the correct client. Um, here's some more details. Um, if Obviously if you have an account with the RTA already, you do business with us, you obviously do have details with us. So we won't, won't override your details. It's just important that we have as much details as possible currently. So for all of our communication possible. Um, company email address. This is obviously very important for us moving forward with our online forms and currently as well, uh, just so we can make sure we get any important communications to you guys as, as you would know. And this is also another additional field here for a company's mobile number as well. So if we don't have that on file. So this is about the property itself. So indicating what type of property it is, how many bedrooms and the address. This also has a validation field here where it's looking up uh, via the Australia Post database. It'll autofill the rest in this once you select that address out of the drop down box. This is about the rent. So there's also some smarts in this field here where it's going to automatically validate and calculate what the maximum amount of the bond should be based on the property. And as well, this is if you do have a lease end date it will pop up here when you click yes, and you'll be able to put in the end date of that lease. And just completing that there. And then as well, this is about the tenant. So you put in the tenant's details. Very important, as I was saying before, that we do have an email address for the tenant for communication. 
as we normally do. This is very important and integral to the online forms processes that we have. And you can also add an additional tenant if you wish, um, and you can confirm the contributions for each tenant. This is the summary page here. So good, good part to take a screenshot possibly of this if you need to, just in case for your records. However, you'll go to the next page and be able to proceed to payment. Here we have MasterCard and Visa payments and BPay payments. So just completing there. Okay. Great. Thanks, Hobie. So, oops, sorry, to everybody. The next slide. So, <clears throat> what happens if a customer cannot access the web services? So, lodgement forms will be available to download from the RTA's website, or you can order by phoning the RTA contact center on 1300 366 311. Paper forms will continue to be accepted via post for those customers who do not have digital access. So this may be that you don't own a computer um, or that you are unable to get assistance from family or friends or the local library. Remember, there are benefits of doing the online web services, that being it's quick and easy, and this is what our clients are looking for. Right. What I might do just now is, um, thanks, Hobie, we, we might just launch another poll. Um, just ask them quickly the question, did you find the online web service lodgement easy to understand and follow? Now, whilst I understand it was, you know, done fairly quickly and, and yeah. a lot of information there, sure. I suppose what we're looking at is just gauging people's um, responses. Look, it was easy to follow. Look, it was, but I might need more information. Um, or no, I, I really do need more information or I really just um, did not understand it. I might just sort of like go to a couple of the questions that's coming through. Cool. Um, and I suppose one of them is, is um, in relation to the auto population field from Australia Post. So if there's no Australia Post address yet, um, the system, you can actually just do a manual field, can't you, Hobie? Yep. You can manually enter in the address. Obviously, that's going to be the case for a lot of new properties. That database is updated quite often. Um, but if it hasn't been added, yes, you can manually go in or like a more difficult address that uh, Julia Post wouldn't track. Okay. And another question that's come through about, you know, do they have to give all the agency details to the tenant if they're going to be lodging the bond? And well, realistic, probably yes. And that's probably whether the ABN sure. number's there or whether it's um, having a copy of that lease agreement with all your details on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and like I said, I mean, having a lease agreement, having those documents in front of you are going to be very important. Um, for doing that lodgement process. So we do suggest you have that in front of you going through that. Okay, I'll just close that poll. Thanks everybody for completing that. Um, and it looks like the majority of people did um, say that it was fairly easy to understand and all they did understand it but may need a little bit more information. So thanks very much for actually answering that um, particular poll. I'll just do one more question. Another one's coming in. People, um, one of the agencies looks like they're working with the elderly and they don't have email address. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that um, may actually be on the on the occasions that that does happen. So I suppose at the end sure. of the day, what you have said before, if people don't have access to web services or computer, that they can actually still do the paper form if need be. Exactly, yeah. We're still going to continue to cater to all types of clients we encounter. So that obviously means that if you do not have an email address, you can still interact with the RTA. Um, obviously, we want to have as much information as possible for our processes. So contact numbers, that's obviously important for this fee process. Um, but an email address at this current time, we can still function with the RTA correctly. Great. So again, there's a lot of benefits. Again, just summarising what Hobie's gone through is that, you know, we're no longer going to be reliant on signatures. It is faster and easier to do this particular process it is going to reduce a lot of administrative errors. And I think that's a very important point to um, sure. creators um, to make sure that people follow this process. And again, to moving on in the lead up to more services that may be coming available online, this is an opportunity for people to jump on and create that QGov, pro um, QGov process. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry everybody. 
So there will be some more changes um, to the RTA services coming soon. And that's going to be expanding the web services to include the refund of rental bond process. So once this is available, this will also replace the e-services PDF upload facility for refunding a rental bond. So clients will still be able to use e-services at this point in time, but again, later on we will be turning off the, any of the other upload, facil upload facilities. So we will be notifying all our customers throughout various methods and providing information and education once that, once that is actually released. But as our RTA progresses towards paperless services, we'll be expanding our digital services. This is also going to reduce our environmental footprint and the RTA will be in a position then to enhance and tailor our customer services and support for the rental sector. Further to this, um, as of 1 January 2020, the RTA is going to be cease um, bulk printing of all our forms and publications. So customers can download these directly from the RTA website and single copies are also going to be available for orders um, by customers who don't have that digital access. Remember, you can send tenants a copy of the 17A information statement, that um, publication for, um, for agents and landlords to give tenants by way of a PDF in an email that if your tenant agrees so. This also is going to give you evidence by providing them with the document. So again, that's part of a requirement under our legislation to make sure that you actually um, do hand over an information statement for general tenancies. With the removal of the witness box from signature page of the tenancy agreement, you can also do digital signatures on this form and also again, email a copy. Just need to make sure that um, with everything that you're doing that you are still complying with the legislation. And for any of the customers who don't have access to a computer or the internet, again, you can still contact the RTA call centre who will be able to send you out the required form. So again, there's going to be more information available on our website over the coming weeks um, in relation to these changes. So Habi, just before I go on to the next slide, there's still a couple more questions coming through mm -hmm. and one of them, that there's quite a few coming through about how long does it take to receive the um, receipt and notification mm -hmm. um, by doing it through the QGov and as um, you had rightly said that um, when it's paid by a direct um, debit or credit card it is mm -hmm. literally an immediate kind of receipt. But mm -hmm. if it's by BPAY, what sort of time frame are we looking at? Well, we're going to generate the BPAY depending on what type of lodgement we get in. Um, obviously, if everything goes correctly, the BPAY reference will be generated quite quickly. So we're talking about very, very, very quickly with that sort of situation. But it does depend on each form. Um, so with that, obviously, it's important for us to making sure that we're getting the right information for the address, we're getting the right information for everyone, so we can contact people about the BPAY reference as quickly as possible. Yeah, so literally once the RTA has processed here, the acknowledgement of bond receipt that is sent out to all parties is sent straight away. So Absolutely. whether they're paying by debit or credit card or paying by BPAY this way. Yep. yep. Okay, over to you, Hobie, for the, um, about the email notifications. Awesome, thanks, Lynn. So, Currently, the RTA sends out notifications to our customer and customers, and this includes bond acknowledgements and receipts. If there are changes between shared bond contributors, we would send out a notification which would include to the new contributors, or if there's a change in managing parties. The time-sensitive notices the RTA sends out includes the notice of claim and notice of unresolved dispute. Notice of claim is where there has been a claim on the bond by one party, and we notify the party whose signature or agreement is missing asking them do they agree or disagree. If they disagree, this proceeds to the RTA's free dispute resolution service for conciliation. If the dispute is unresolved at the end of that process, then a notice of unresolved dispute is issued, which allows the person to apply to QCAT for adjudication. Again, timeframes apply with these two processes. For agents and managing businesses, if you have changes within your business with staff, it's important that you notify the RTA of anyone who no longer has the authority to deal with the RTA and sign off on bond related matters. For tenants and for landlords, to protect your privacy, ensure your email address that is provided to the RTA is an individual one and not a jointly accessible email. This is really important and we also ask that you provide an email address that you regularly access and check. Remember, some notifications that are sent by the RTA are time sensitive regarding actions that require a response or a further step within a set time frame. 
So it's important to make sure customers check their emails regularly. Mm. Okay. And it's a valid point too, what you're saying there, Hobie, is that you know, we, are, we do take privacy and security um, very important um, two points. Yes. So we really need to do, as for individual sales, for a property manager or an owner, making sure that when they're having their tenants um, send information to the RTA with, with the lodgement form and everything, that they do actually have individual email addresses and not ones that it's jointly accessible. So um, one of the questions coming in in relation to the bond loan, the 2C, the Department of Housing bond loan forms, um, that's not acceptable through the online process. They will still have to, people will still have to send those forms in, won't they, Toby? Yeah, so there won't be any changes in regards to that process currently. Okay. So that'll still continue. Okay, just going to talk quickly in relation to um, median rents. We have a lot of... Um, questions coming through. Just to give people an idea, we have over 600 registrations today, so there's a lot of questions coming through. And I'm going to sort of like try, I've been trying to sort of like um, summarise some of those in little um, different um, topics um, so that we can actually address those. So what I'm going to do is just quickly go through the median rents. Um, the median rents are calculated by the RTA and we provide information on what the typical rents are for recently rented properties in a particular area. This data um, is analysed on information gathered from new rental bond lodgements each quarter. So the data doesn't gather information on the condition or the age of the property or any other inclusions. So to go and find out more information, what you do is go to the RTA's website um, and in the top corner up here where I've got the um, mouse hovering over, you'll see forms and resources and then just quickly come down here to the side here where it has the median rents quick finder. In the median rents quick finder, this allows you to see what new rental bonds are lodged each quarter and you can also select a postcode for the property and also the dwelling type. So in this example, um, we're looking at um, uh, the April to June quarter, the postcode 4101 and we're looking for flats or units that's in that um, particular field. When you then submit, You'll then go into our um, Rents Quick Finder and in this particular situation we can see that a two bedroom unit, the median rent for that particular postcode is $520 per week and in the particular quarter we received 430 bonds that's actually been lodged through. Another tool what you can actually do and I'll just quickly just highlight this part. If you then are on this particular screen, if you just, I'm just highlighting that, terribly sorry. Um, you can also click on here to view the latest detailed um, spreadsheet data. And what this will actually do is take you into an area where you can actually sort in relation to the regions. So this is where, again, we're looking at one, two or three bedroom flats and houses and townhouses. Um, but what you can also do in this is also go through the particular areas. So if I clicked on Central Queensland, when I go into that, that will actually split into whether it's like Rockhampton, Mackay, all the different regions. So it's one way to actually see also um, the information about the types of properties, not just from a market rental, um, but also to see how many properties you may actually be, that may be let in your particular area during that quarter. So coming soon is actually going to be an update to this um, and that's going to look, he'll have a look and a feel that's slightly different, but it's also going to be easier to use. So do watch this space. As I said, there's a lot of information out there in relation to the rental sector and this is also another way, just again, checking on those market rentals. So again, I'll just go through, just in summarising today's webinar, from 1 October 2019, the RTA's bond lodgement web service will replace the option to upload those PDF versions of the bond lodgement forms. We also know too that some agents are actually emailing um, scanned copies of the lodgement forms through. Um, that will actually cease as well. The only way to be doing things online will be through the bond lodgement web services. And again, that's requiring that QGov account to be um, created first and going through that. So the web service is a new, fast and efficient and secure way to lodge the bond. And again, we're removing that risk of all the incorrect information that the RTA is getting, all the missing information from forms. 
Coming soon though will be the refund of rental bonds online. And so once this is online, the RTA will be turning off the e-services upload of refund forms. But again, more communication is going to be coming from the RTA when that is available. And again, along with any of the other new online forms, such as your change to details and also the bond disputes. Remember, individual email addresses, particularly for tenants and landlords, for agents and property managers, if your staff changes, please ensure the RTA has up-to-date information as in who has the authority in your organisation to be um, dealing with the bonds. And again, from 1 January 2020, the RTA will cease bulk printing of all forms and publications. Remember, you can download versions from the RTA's website or if you require a single form, again, give our friendly staff in our contact centre a call on the 1300 366 311 number. Okay, that's our contact details. And again, keep on, there's a lot of information in relation to what we have gone through today about our web services and to lodge that online. I probably recommend people go and give it a go in relation to creating that QGov account. Um, again, in the lead up to more online services being available, this is an opportunity to make sure that you are registered and be able to do this particular process as we um, launch further um, online processes. So we also have a video and a fact sheet on for both tenants, landlords and property managers on this new process. And again, we also have a, um, people in our call centre who have been trained up to take inquiries in relation to our web services. So if you do need more information, um, again, please contact our friendly staff on our 1300 number. So Hobie, I think we've got a lot of questions coming through. Yeah, we do. Um, more than probably what we might have realised. Um, but I suppose there's a lot here in relation to about when the rent increases and the bonds increases. So this is that top up process. So will the online services accept the increase? So this is the topping up of the bond. So the online services will allow you to do the increase. Currently, there is not a specialised lodgement service for that top up itself, but you currently can do that. It will be designed in the future. The future will be put out that yeah, top up service will be available. Yeah, okay. And, and there's a lot of people asking in relation to whether it has to be the licensee or the company account, or is it a personal account? So can a property manager do the registration? or does it have to be the licensee? And I suppose at the end of the day, the licensee is the person who is actually in control of that particular agency, but probably either the property manager or the licensee can do the registrations. Yep, either the yeah, either the property manager or the licensee. Um, if you are the property manager, just gotta please ensure that you use your unique work email address so we can verify your profile for transactions with the RTA. Uh, you also have to make sure the lodgement form has the correct contact details for your organisation so we still need to make sure the official correspondence goes to the right place, basically. Okay. And how secure is the QGov and the RTA site? Yeah, it's a very secure site. So basically the whole process we went through with the 100 points of ID, the whole basis of that is to basically replace signatures. And by doing that, we need to make a very secure website. Um, and use, sorry, the QGov's already secure website. So QGov have a lot more information available if you go to their website, so a QGov uh, for FAQs as well on there. Um, so the service we're providing is similar to all online transactions such as your banking and the RTA has built the system to international internet standards, so both sites are very secure. Right, um, and there's a lot of questions in relation to the bulk lodgement, so sure. as a real estate agent or on-site manager, sure. um, what's actually happening about the bulk lodgements? Sure, so the RTA has continued to investigate the feasibility um, to create a digitised service for multiple bulk online lodgements. At this stage, this is not available and only the single bond lodgement is available. So your current process that you have for bulk lodgements can still go on, so you can still use that. Okay, so people can still do the paper form, but we are encouraging them to give the um, QGov and the online process go Absolutely. and again particularly with the fact that we are heading more down this path and creating um, more online forms um, and more services that way. Just quickly I can see one question that I just want to quickly point out here so you don't need to do screen prints of all the submissions that you're going to say what exactly was submitted there's a summary page there that you can print off it'll you'll be allowed to take that at the end of that process um, just to keep the record 
I mean, obviously you'll get some confirmation from us as well when you do that lodgement there. I just saw a question there. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, I manage accommodation for international students. They don't have Australian identification. So if a tenant doesn't meet the requirements, um, then you can still lodge a paper form onto the RTA. Okay, and likewise, it goes back to one of the other questions earlier about, you know, I work with the elderly and they don't have email addresses. So again, there still is that opportunity to still lodge the um, paper forms. Um, so I'll take this one from uh, in relation to the removing of the forms. So you, um, the question's about sending tenants um, a PDF form by email. Um, and again, as of 1 January, we are going to be removing the bulk printing. So that information statement, yes, you can email a, a copy to your tenant. And again, that gives you that um, protection in relation to showing that you actually have given them a copy of that um, information statement as well, as well. Remember, any of our forms and publications, you can download um, and complete any of our RTA forms from the RTA's website. Um, and again, if you don't have access to the internet or um, through to the website, you can just give us a call and we will send out the required form. Remember, our focus is actually reducing our environmental footprint and focusing more in relation to tailoring our services for other areas that the RTA provides. So I'm just, I think we've still got quite a few more questions there in relation to, do you still need a tenant to sign a bond form? Going through this process is actually removing that yes. signature. Yes, absolutely. But with a bond lodgement form, paper-based, uh, you still want to be gathering that signature if you can. Um, but for the online bond lodgement, you don't need a signature. Yeah. And one of the questions, who's responsible for lodging the bond, the tenant or the agent? And realistically, either party can actually lodge a bond. And it always has been that way. And I suppose what you're looking at as from a real estate agent point of view, you're wanting to make sure that the bond's been paid um, and held here at the RTA, obviously as part of your practices before you're handing over the keys. So again, looking at that time frame when you're getting tenants to pay. If the tenant is paying the real estate agent, just keep in mind there's that 10 day time frame that you must, um, after receiving a bond, that you must lodge that bond with the RTA. Again, that 10 day time frame is under the legislation, under section 116, that you need to comply with that. So a lot of agents will find that, you know, once a week that they, um, you know, pull all the bonds together and lodge it. But you may find that your business practices might start changing in relation to lodging those bonds as they come through, if it's that way, or alternatively, asking your tenants to actually pay the bond and reducing that administration task yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of probably pushes about, is the RTA pushing for the tenant to lodge their own bond? And again, it goes back to either party has always been able to um, lodge a bond. So I suppose what we're looking at is just start thinking of ways how to introduce some of the changes that's coming through into your business. Um, for agents and managers, making sure they're again emailing copies of information statements. Um, we do see a lot of agents already um, emailing notices as part of their um, processes during the tenancy. Um, but again, this is just all that pre-tenancy stuff as well. So again, how long until we receive a BPAY bill of code? from when it's lodged? Um, so from when it's successfully created, so all the details are correct, it's gone through on our, we've been able to process successfully, the BPA code is going to go out instantly. So when we're lining up with that process of confirming when the, the tenant, oh, there's a couple of questions there pointing out this as well, when is the tenant paid to the RTA? Um, that all the stuff with this process of being online, it's a lot quicker. So I mean, we're talking about potentially of getting these things sorted out a lot quicker than currently like a check or something in the mail. So you'll be able to confirm that payment with the RTA um, because that BPAY process and the processing of that is a lot quicker. Yeah, and one of the questions coming through in relation to the, if you have multiple tenants paying a bond. Um, on the video, um, when Hobie was going through it, there is a part there where it actually fills in um, where the example showed one tenant, but you can actually add in more tenants. So, um, you know, if you've got three tenants moving in, um, you, the system will can actually calculate what the, if it's divided by three or if there's particular sure. amounts in relation to what each um, person is paying as bond contributors. Remember, the RTA is only wanting bond contributors. So there may be two or three people on the lease, but maybe one person only paid the bond. We just need to know who actually is the contributor of the actual bond. 
Look, I think we can actually um, do one more question and I suppose that is in relation to a lot of it's coming through about the timeframes. So, you know, as I said... It's, it's, it's going to depend based on which logic comes in, obviously. Um, it's hard to give a hard and fast timeframe with this sort of stuff, obviously, just because if there is issues, we don't want people to be expecting something that just if there is the odd case where a bond launchment won't be able to go through, we will need to be able to contact you guys and sort it out uh, as quick as possible. So what I like to say on that though is that we, once we get the information, it goes through, and a lot of, a lot of cases it's going to go through very, very quick um, with our lodgement process that we currently do generating that BPAY. Then it depends when we receive that money back. And once we receive that money back, then we will automatically generate that acknowledgement of, of bond and so right. out. I'll just do the one last question here is in relation to do each property manager require to create a QGov account? Well, the answer is yes. If they're actually um, going through and authoring a bond lodgement form yeah. with us or doing any transaction with us online, then we need to identify them. Um, and obviously they need to be using their work email address and going through that particular process. Um, but yes, anyone that is actually going through the um, online services, whether it's the currently online bond lodgement or down the track in relation to the refunds and other forms and services that we'll actually have available, you will actually have to have um, your own QGov um, process. And again, if you don't actually have that 100 point ID um, and unable to go through that particular process, we still will actually have the paper process available. But keep in mind too, QGov is actually, um, and we can provide feedback to QGov as well, um, but they're actually looking to enhance and add more sure. more bits and bobs to their services as we progress. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Okay. Look, thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. I know we've just gone over time and I do apologise for that. A quick survey is going to pop up on your screen once I close the webinar and we would really appreciate you completing the form and providing us with feedback along with the topics that you would like to know more about. Now I know I haven't gotten to know any of the amount of questions that um, we have gotten through but I think we've kind of summarised in a lot of different themes um, that has come through but this is also great feedback for us because then we can then look at taking, tailoring and making sure that any information or questions that we are asked if there's if there's multiple questions on that type of things we can actually create more resources on our website. So again a lot of this information helps us put together future webinars and again also to in that survey if you put down what types of topics you would like to know more about that will actually assist us greatly. So again thank you very much for your attendance everybody we really appreciate your time. Uh, the webinar will now close and again the survey will be available so please complete that survey. Thank you, thank you and thank you Hobie for your attendance today too. No worries, thank you.